We just got back from Newport, Vermont. And we had a great time shooting the total solar eclipse together. We flew to Dallas for the eclipse, which was insane. And we made a decision to not take any, you know, bulky piece of gear. So we only had Vespera, which I took care of, and Hestia here, which Dahlia had. And we both had a bunch of different imaging setups but we both used the Sea Star and the Dwarf. Let's jump into what we thought about these two. So Sarah, um, I know that you uh, shot with the Dwarf in a particular way. What mode did you use? So I used the time-lapse mode and um, I just used some manual settings, the ones that were recommended for the Dwarf, um, a gain of zero and a shutter speed of uh, one two hundredth of a second since it was fairly bright and just kind of uh, let it go. And I think the time lapse turned out really well. I, um, the dwarf was able to keep everything in the frame and centered pretty well. And um, it exposed throughout the entire eclipse. We started from C1 and went all the way up to C4. So uh, I'm excited to show you what we have here. So the battery lasted, storage was no problem. Yeah, battery did really well. I did have it plugged in the entire okay. time. Um, I did want to just have Yeah, just have that for as, assurance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, storage was great, so no problems there. and. Yeah, everything went pretty flawlessly. So how did you uh, capture the eclipse with this? So I took some time before the actual eclipse to practice pointing at the sun. Um, by then I already had like the update on gravity for the time lapses, which I thought was very useful and really great of Aeonis to do. Uh, however, every uh, interval was like five minutes which I thought was a little unreasonable for me and what I wanted to get out of it. So on the day of I decided to do one minute time lapse so i had my my apple watch like synced up to one minute intervals every time a minute passed by i restarted it and i put my phone on top of hestia and left it there the whole time from beginning to end um every minute just click 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 taking my own photos and the great thing about it was that even if i was a little bit off center which occasionally i would be um, when it creates the time lapse later when you export it to your phone, it centers the sun, which is so like, I thought that was so great. Automatically, yeah. Automatically. Um, I think it really only got messy when I was taking the actual eclipse photos because I was moving around a lot. Um, but it was also exciting. <laughs> because there is no tracker on this, so you have to manually. Yes, it. you have to manually, like I also had to manually like move it the whole time. So on top of the one minute intervals that I was doing, I was also just adjusting it slightly the whole time um, from beginning to end. So first contact to last contact. But it's a wide field view, so you don't have to like always be on yeah. it. It so wasn't, uh... it wasn't stressful at all. I would say it was very easy to use. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, I like that when you did the time lapse, it centered the sun, and I liked the, how it came out at the end when it was exported as a video. But you know, you really had to practice beforehand to really find out whether that was going to work out for you or not. I decided the day of two minutes is too long, one minute, and that's how I went, which was really crazy. Yeah, and there was no editing to do at all, so no, nope. very simple. No takesies, backsies. I would say the only like cons or like drawbacks for me was uh, I. It was really hard for me to take the, the, so, the solar filter off. Me personally, I wouldn't say it's a difficult thing to do. It's just, I was a little like, uh, you know, not wanting to like lose focus or anything, which was really important to me because I wanted to have nice crisp Yeah, the images. focus is here. That's how you change the focus. And it's very easy to move. So if you took the filter off, it would move a little bit. Um, I didn't like the five minute uh, intervals for uh, taking a photo if and also it didn't take a picture even if you waited the five minutes so that was also a little difficult but I, I figured out a way to do it and I would say that overall it was a very pleasant experience for first time using this for an, uh, an astronomical event that I've never <laughs> done before I think it came out pretty well and I'm very very pleased with how my time lapse came out especially since I think that's all that we got out of our I kind of messed up mine <laughs> Uh, like a, a very, very stupid mistake. So I'm very glad she was able to get something nice out of this because uh, I was, oh no. Anyway, that was a really good result with this such an easy thing. Like it was in our backpack, so very simple to, to carry around and set up and, and use. And so moving on to the Sea Star, you also did time lapse with this I one, right? I did, yes. I did 20 seconds. Um, so it took an image every 20 seconds. And 
I mean, everything stayed in the frame uh, really well. It only started to get a little bit overexposed as it got closer to totality, which wasn't bad. I could have just gone in and, you know, changed the exposures, uh, exposure settings a little bit. But uh, I do I do know that you did a little bit of the manual exposure setting changes. Um, yeah, I, I was interested in that. And again, I shot video. The one thing to warn you about raw video is that it fills up the storage space really quickly. Um, so during the partial phase from C1 to C2, when the moon starts uh, getting in front of the sun, I was shooting 10 minute long raw videos, like the max length. And after a couple of those, um, the storage was almost full. On my third one, it actually filled. And I can say that when it fills the storage, it tells you, it stops the recording, it does save that one, but then it says out of storage. So what I ended up doing, because I of course wanted raw video of totality with the C-Star, is I deleted one of my previous uh, raw videos and was able to get totality. And then in terms of exposure with uh, video, I found that uh, for the beginning of the partial phase up to about two thirds in, it was the auto exposure worked great. When it got into sort of that crescent of the sun, then it started overexposing. But if you do go into manual settings and turn it all the way down, you could get a proper exposure. Uh, it's just that the auto exposure was sort of just that blown out look. One cool thing about shooting video with the C-Star is I think the Bailey's beads looks really cool live where uh, you, can, you can see it sort of turning in fr into the sort of diamond ring line effect into the little beads right before totality. Yeah, that was really neat. I was that was a, a great choice on your part to do that. That's probably the highlight of what I was uh, what I was able to capture with either smart telescope. I think to kind of talk about totality again with the dwarf and and the sea star, it was really cool to be able to see prominences as well. You know, it's hard to get all these different exposure settings just right to get any one of these different types of features that are going on um, in such a short amount of time. But I was very impressed to see that both of these devices were able to, you know, capture these uh, prominences, especially this one that you can actually see with the naked eye. So they did a great job capturing uh, that as well. Yeah, overall, I was pretty impressed. And they both tracked quite well. And one thing, um, Sarah, you were talking about was not knowing how they would track during totality because that's a very like untested feature and what was your experience with that yeah i mean my experience is uh it seemed to they both seem to do just fine and um i was really impressed because yeah i didn't it's kind of uh, an unknown and you can't really uh simulate that and i Practice, was pretty yeah. impressed <laughs> impressed with them yeah yeah it's, it's like um, and you were mentioning like you, we were not really exactly sure how the machine right. vision works. Like, was it based on brightness or seeing a circle or what? So totality might have completely thrown it off, but it, they both seem to just continue on. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah very impressed because yeah, is it uh, just all mechanistic and timing, or is it you know combination of computer vision? And um, so it was it was cool to see that they were both able to you know keep things tracking and centered up, especially in all of these unknowns. So. And the filters, what did you think about the filters? Well, yeah, so if we play my Bailey's Beads video again, you can see when it um, is coming out of the Bailey's Beads into totality, it's like shaking violently. And I think that's because I had just <laughs> torn off this uh, orange filter here and it is really, you know, I did it pretty well just now, but, <laughs> but I think during, see if you really get it in there, yeah, it's, it's you really have to move yeah. this around to get it off. So what I'd recommend if you use this, I think we both did this, is like just put it halfway in and it still is going to make a light seal there. Um, or you can maybe try to make something custom, but we both found making custom filters for this was difficult. It was difficult. Yeah, because just knowing, uh, you know, we're kind of trying to take into to consideration what about wind potentially, but you don't want to make something that's uh, uh, too secure on there because it's harder to get off. So it just, uh, we just eventually both independently decided just to go with the, uh, the sea stars designated solar filter and we did the best we could. <laughs> yep. If you, Sarah, were to do like another eclipse, like for instance, we're talking about Tunisia in 2027, would you bring a smart telescope? I would. I really love the time-lapse features of these devices. I think it's just very handy to be able to set these up and just let them go. And, you know, by 2027, I can only imagine how far these types of devices will be. But, yeah, just being able to let them go and get a nice kind of story of what the entire eclipse was like in the midst of kind of everything else that was going on is, is pretty cool. What about you? Yeah, I mean... 
it's interesting. I, I was just sort of thinking about it as you were talking, and it's like, if if I had for this one, we could both bring whatever we wanted because we both drove. So we, in addition to these, we had like big Ascar 103. We both right. had Canon cameras, telescope mounts. We could bring whatever we want. But when we, if we go to Tunisia 2027, it's going to be much more limited. Right. Um, so would I want to take up? space with one of these and like my carry-on luggage. Um, I'm not sure. So just to kind of wrap things up, if you were able to use one of these devices during the eclipse, we'd love to hear your feedback. What was your experience like? Did you use manual settings or auto settings? And uh, what were your images like? We'd love to see those as well. All right. Until next time, this has been Nico. This has been Sarah. Clear skies.